Sean, your your sort of number one qualifying issue throughout the whole of the Israel Hamas conflict has been the humanitarian factor, has been the primary thing ultimately we should we should think about. It's been heart wrenching to see uh, the casualties and the death on both sides. Now we're down to ones and twos, uh, where a mum or a dad is waiting for their child to be released. It's it's not the volume, but it's equally heart wrenching. So we've entered this phase of negotiating about you know swap for swap from films and so on. We think of Checkpoint Charlie, two people walking across a bridge and getting exchanged. It's also simple. This is not simple, is it? It's it's difficult. How? How are they actually doing it, and why is it why is it so difficult? Well, picking up on your point about how heart wrenching it must be, I mean, you know, we've seen over the last few days lists are being generated last minute. Families don't know when their loved ones are going to be released. There seems to be an implication at the start that members of one family would stay together. That appears not to have been the case. Just imagine if you were the husband or the aunt or whatever and hoping for your family to return and only half of them is on the list and you're still waiting the whole process is is heart wrenching and probably is is part of the agenda for both sides potentially in this but why is it so difficult part of it is just practicalities i mean hamas uh held 238 hostages if if it's to be believed that's a lot of hostages they're going to be Will they be all together? Will they be scattered around? And Hamas will not want the release of small numbers of hostages to in any way betray where the rest of them are held. Mm. And they will know that Israel will be using satellite technology, anything they can to watch, to see if they can learn where the rest of the hostages are. First of all, Hamas has got to be really careful. Um, they've also got to be careful to know that the hostages, when they are released, don't know where they. Yeah, they will. Be, they will be debriefed, won't they? And mm. if they are able to, well, it was quite dark, or it was we were in this, or I saw this, that might all be valuable. So Hamas, first of all, want to dislocate the hostages they're going to release. They'll want to confuse them. They'll be blindfolded. They will be potentially for twenty four hours. They'll be run ragged so that they have no idea where they are, where they were held, any idea of their location. Um, then, of course, you've got the situation of Hamas is not going to hand them over to the Israelis. So the first stage of this is Hamas handing them over to some sort of mediator. In this case, it's the International Committee of the Red Cross. So where's that going to happen? It's not going to happen in Israel. So it's going to happen somewhere in Gaza. It's going to be secretive because... Hamas won't want anybody else to know where it is. The Red Cross need to know where it is. It's probably not going to be all of them released together. It possibly could be ones or twos in different locations. So if any one of them is compromised, it doesn't compromise the whole thing. And then Hamas are going to fade away. And the next stage is how does the Red Cross get these hostages out of Gaza and safely into Israeli hands? Um, does it come across one of the checkpoints? We've seen some of them come through the checkpoints. Uh, or do they come out through bespoke openings in the border? And then, of course, when they have been released, they'll be desperately keen to go to their families. But, of course, the Israelis absolutely will be wanting to question them, yeah. um, find out everything they know. How were they treated? What were they fed? What was the what was the rhythm of how they were treated? Could they hear anything? Could they see anything? Could they feel the darkness of the tunnels or the dampness of the tunnels, mm. all of that will be invaluable intelligence before mm. they finally get a medical of some form. Then they meet the families and then they um, potentially can talk to the media. So it's an incredibly complex mm. um, challenge. Mm. And uh, and that's just the tip of the sword. I mean, there's mm. all sorts of other issues about which hostages are going to be released. At the moment, it appears to be they're focusing on the women and children, but we'll see what the future holds. Mm. Yeah, I mean, one question that people have been asking uh, is why isn't it one person for one person? Uh, there's been a bit of sort of crass reporting about this as well. Let's talk, why does one Israeli make three Palestinians? But just leaving that aside, why, why, why is it one for three or whatever the 
the ratio is, why isn't it one for one? Yeah, a lot of this is about how badly you want something. So um, the simple analogy is I may have paid a pound for that pen, but if you haven't got a pen and you want it, how much are you prepared to pay for it? Um, and I may extort you for three pounds for that pen rather than a pound. And if you need it enough, you'll buy it. It's pretty clear in this conflict that Israel, one of its main focuses is to get its hostages back again. And it is prepared to pay quite a high price to get those hostages back. Mm. Um, and mindful that there are thousands of Palestinian prisoners uh, being held, um, it looks likely that they have um, you know, the one-on-one -on -one doesn't seem to um, work in this regard. That's not work, no. No, so it's no. more about we're prepared to um, give up a hostage if you release three of ours, and mm. Israel's gone, yes. What I think will be interesting is that um, that works today when you're looking at women and children and being released, but there are several classes of hostages. So there's the men folk, then there's the... Uh, international community, and then there's the IDF soldiers themselves. I suspect each of those will require a different negotiation. Yeah. And by way of historical example, um, you know, the last time that Israel had one of their IDF incarcerated for four years, Hamas managed to secure the release of over a thousand prisoners. For that one soldier. Yeah. And interestingly, one of those Palestinians that were released was a guy called Yahya Sinwar. Mm. And he's now the head of Hamas in yeah. Gaza. Yeah. So these were pretty um, high tariff prisoners that yeah. were released. That's serious stuff. So I think we're going to see a continuous mm. negotiation mm. around this. So it's not about one Palestinian worth more. It's about the currency, what it's worth to each side yeah. to yeah. enable a release. And it, it, I would deduce from what you said that the, the smaller the number, actually, the, the higher the stakes go. Well, one of the things that's going to be interesting about this whole hostage situation, as we sit here today, there's been an extension to the truce because originally 50 hostages over four days. Then they agreed a sort of two day extension, 10 hostages a day. And the Israelis have been very clear. We will continue to give you a day's truce for every 10 hostages released. And interestingly, both sides, actually, despite all of the frictions, both sides are probably incentivized to make that work because Israel wants to get its hostages back and its military operation hasn't secured that. So an extension to the truce, every 10 that come out reduces the number of hostages. It makes sense. From a Hamas perspective, why would they want to get rid of a currency like hostages well, actually, what they want to do is have a long as possible truce mm. because the longer it goes on, the more difficult it is for Israel to step forward mm. and start fighting again. And let's do the basic maths now. 236 hostages, 50 first uh, four days, so 186 left. If you were to release 10 a day, 18 days, you'd have six hostages left. 18 days takes you out to mid-December. And Hamas managed to be very effective with one hostage. So six mm. is a lot more manageable for Hamas. It's still a very powerful currency. And if we did last 18 days, would Israel actually go back to war for six hostages? Mm. Or would they look to find another way to negotiate those out? So I think there's going to be really interesting to see what happens over the coming days. Uh, Israel will undoubtedly threaten a return to military operations. And I wouldn't be surprised to see a sporadic Hamas is playing hardball, doesn't meet the deadline, Israel goes and starts the fighting again. The mediation from Qatar and Egypt brings it back to... So we might see a stuttering progress, but it's very difficult to see this next phase of fighting for Israel. If they start moving south in Gaza, even the Israels admit it's going to be highly um, more casualties, both military and civilian. And, and is it going to achieve the release of the hostages? Unlikely. Is it going to um, um, compound the humanitarian situation? Almost certainly, yes. Mm. Will there be increasing pressure on the international community to say stop? 
So I think there's going to be some really interesting dynamics over the coming days.